I'm going to now introduce David and Mary. David and Mary is quite a beast in the developer community. And um, David and Mary is actually the program manager in the Azure SQL database product group. And he's been working in the IT field since 1997 and was the awarded the data platform MVP status for 12 consecutive years. His career started as a full stack and backend developer, then focused on databases and data science for 15 years while still keeping alive his passion for development, mainly in C Sharp and Python. He then moved on to the Internet of Things and big data space where ingesting, processing, and analyzing millions of data points in near real time was his everyday challenge. Building from that experience, he joined Microsoft to help companies worldwide leverage stream processing at scale. He now works for the Azure SQL database as a developer's voice inside the product group, working to make sure that Azure SQL database is and will be the best database option for developers. So now I bring you Davide. Yeah, thank you. Hello, hey. Davide. It's nice to see you. Yeah, nice, uh, nice to see you again. Uh, and thanks for having me in the show. It's great having you because we recently released the Azure SQL and um, Microsoft SQL Server Connector to general right. availability. And we've been seeing a lot of uh, uh, users really excited, especially Microsoft um, developers working in the Microsoft ecosystem. And I believe that today you're going to be giving us a, a really interesting talk about all of the latest technologies and how they fit in with Azure SQL. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as you surely know, we, we created some nice example that I want to share and to showcase, uh, yeah, of course, Prisma, but <laughs> I don't think I have to sing uh, the praise of Prisma here. Uh, and uh, But I, I want to highlight how, er, how well it works with Azure SQL, uh, with Azure uh, Static Web Apps. So we'll be creating uh, and I will be sharing the, the GitHub repository uh, on how to create a fully working, uh, full stack web app, uh, including authentication, with uh, Prisma and Azure SQL. And I think it's great for people to get started with, uh, you know, TypeScript, uh, full stack. It's a lot of moving parts. Now, uh, I'm learning not myself. And you, I didn't realize uh, when you say full stack, uh, how many moving parts there are. And so I think that this, uh, this repository we created uh, is great for uh, new developers that want to, you know, get into this field uh, to exactly understand all the pieces and how they are tied together. So I'm super happy about this repository we created. Wonderful. So now I'll give you the stage. I'm going to bring yep. you your screen. Are you ready to share? There we go. We have your screen and Perfect. I'm going to take myself off and the stage is yours, Davide. Ah, thank you. Um, so let's start from uh, the repository I was uh, discussing. Uh, and basically, you can just go to docs.microsoft.com and then click on code samples and then just search for Prisma. And then you will be finding uh, REST and GraphQL, of course, we did uh, everything. Uh, To-do MVC example uh, uh, page. And basically, this is, this is the explanation of um, what this repository uh, will, will do for you. So it will deploy um, HTML and Vue.js uh, uh, to-do list. Uh, again, I like uh, the simple stuff, especially for beginners. So I just uh, used this uh, very well-known repository or very well-known sample to create the front end. Uh, so here is an example of the to-do list. Uh, hi, you can uh, create your own to-do list uh, and you know mark what is done as what is not. But of course, this is just the front end, and we want to do the uh, full stack thing. So we also need to create a backend. But luckily, um, the backend is very easy to be done because uh, uh, the HTML and Vue.js just sent JSON to some backend, and our backend will be created with TypeScript and Charisma, so it will be super easy to be created. And behind the scene, we'll store everything in Azure. And I will just then uh, uh, leave last 10 minutes of my, my presentation to tell you why I, I decided to use Azure SQL, besides the fact, of course, I'm in the product group. And here there is all the explanation on uh, uh, how you can uh, clone the repository and make it work for you. But uh, instead of reading this, I think it's uh, worth uh, to do this together. So first of all, uh, you need uh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, you need, uh, you need uh, the Azure Function Core Tools and the Static Web App CLI if you want to uh, develop on your machine. And if you want to develop on your machine, my, my recommendation is to use uh, uh, VS Code. So you just uh, clone the repository, this repository that then if you click from this page, you can go browse the code and it will bring you to the GitHub page. So you just go here, 
grab the, um, the URL and then uh, clone it on your machine. We we'll see how it, uh, you can do it is uh, later if, if uh, someone joining today is completely new to this, uh, also this part of the coding. And once you have uh, the repository cloned, uh, um, there are a couple of things I want to highlight. So let me just zoom a little bit uh, into this. So um, the client folder contains uh, all the front end. And the front end is super easy. Let's take the rest one. It's just uh, a super simple uh, one page uh, view application that basically uh, calls some API behind the scene and the to do API, of course, and uh, and basically, um, you know, manage the fact that uh, you may want to add a new to do, uh, um, mark a uh, to do as completed or remove one and so on and so forth. So the client is really the front end. And then we have the API, which is the back end. The back end uh, is written in, uh, in uh, uh, TypeScript and we have two uh, function working here. One that uh, provides an example of how you can create a REST endpoint. Of course, here we are using Prisma. Um, so, you know, for example, getting, uh, um, let me go here. For example, getting the list of all to do is super easy. You just do a find many. And this is something we'll discuss later. But basically, as you can see already, I am I want to make sure that uh, I only return the to do that I own, right? Because we want to create a real uh, website. So it's not that we want to create a to-do and make it available to everyone, right? So we want to have to be able to be logged in. And of course, uh, when I log it in, it is logged user ID will represent myself. So I want to um, only show the, only return the to-do if someone issue a get, uh, a get method that I own. And this is true for everything. So even if I, when I create a new to do, I basically it is just answer to a post request and I will use the create method provided by the Prisma, uh, Prisma client. And uh, same as goes for, uh, for GraphQL. So with GraphQL, you basically do exactly the same, but instead of exposing a REST endpoint, uh, we take advantage of the GraphQL uh, flexibility and expressibility, but again, always uh, using Prisma. So for example, the mutation for adding a new to-do uh, behind the scene, just call exactly the same code uh, that the REST endpoint would, uh, would call, which is basically a Prisma to-do create and passing again the, you know, the title of the to-do, uh, if it's completed or not, uh, and who owns or who created that to-do. So super easy. Uh, now, this uh, API, when we will deploy, will be based on Azure Function. Uh, but to have everything, so have the web part and the Azure Function part working nicely together, it's pretty easy. Uh, you just have uh, to, uh, as I said before, install the Azure uh, Static Web Apps CLI that uh, would then allow you to do just a SWA start, specify where you have your uh, client, specify where the API are, and then that's it. So it will, uh, uh, it will uh, basically start to listen for the and, and serve the uh, static web app, uh, the client part, basically the front end, and then also create uh, or execute the function behind the scene and, and make sure that uh, the call from the web client are proxied to the function so you don't have to deal with the uh, course uh, and all this complex stuff at the beginning that uh, I, I'm pretty sure everyone had to fight it a little bit uh, at, at some point in his life. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, um, I already configured the connection string uh, to connect to a database. Um, so that's done already. So the only thing I can do right now is a click here and I will go to my to do MVC example and then I can easily click on the rest. Uh, let's say my first to do and that's it. This is done. If I connect to my database and I can see that the first to do has been created and inserted in the database. And of course, now I haven't logged in. So I'm anonymous. <clears throat> now, if I want to log in, and this is the interesting part of using the SWA, so the um, static web app uh, CLI locally, is that they even provide uh, or simulate uh, the complete uh, uh, authentication or auth authentication that you would normally use, for example, to authenticate using an external provider like GitHub or Twitter. So let's say I want to simulate uh, the ability for my end user when I will deploy the application to use uh, GitHub to authenticate against my application. So using a GitHub as a third party authenticator. So this is me, this is Davide. Uh, I have, let's say I just have a one, two, three, four, five, this is my user ID. I want to log in 
and now if I click here, I will not be able to see anything because I can only see the thing I own. And in fact, I've been logged in as Davide. And now if I say hello, hello world here, this will be created. If I go in database uh, and up oh, this here, you will see that now the hello world uh, is uh, basically related now to the owner ID 12345, which is me. So uh, even locally, I can simulate the full end-to-end -end experience uh, or even debug it. Uh, so I can have a completely local uh, local de uh, development uh, experience, which is which is great. And of course, the same uh, with uh, uh, with GraphQL. Uh, now GraphQL uh, reads and writes from the same database. So basically, it is another way to create uh, and manage to do from exactly from the same database, but just using uh, GraphQL. So hello again, but this will end up uh, in the same database just uh, using GraphQL. Now, how can you um, also deploy this? Uh, this is what I like about uh, the static web apps. So, uh, of course, you can do from your machine. Uh, in that case, I would recommend to use uh, 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 Ubuntu installation, for example, uh, Windows uh, Windows system for Linux. Uh, that's what I'm using here because uh, all the script I've created uh, are bash script, are shell script. If you don't have uh, uh, Linux installed on your machine or you don't want to, there is another easy way. So you can go to shell, actually, let me show you, shell.azure.com. It will connect to your portal. And using your subscription, it will spin up uh, a fully working uh, Azure uh, or Bash, uh, yes, a Bash shell uh, that you can use to do whatever you need. Uh, that's it. So the shell is done. Now, uh, for example, here I can go to my uh, Git directory and almost everything you need is already installed. Of course, you can install additional stuff, but for example, Git is already installed. So I already have a, a um, sample here in case something goes wrong, but I want to really do everything with you. And so what I can do is grab my repository, go back, sorry, to my test shell. Let's go uh, here. Uh, I think I'm using this one. Okay. And so let's do, let's clone it, this repository and, oh, git clone it. And basically I'm cloning this. Now I just have to do two things here. Uh, first of all, go into the folder. And uh, now you, this is the, the, the file you have to use in order to deploy everything. Let's just make sure it's executable. So let's give it a X permission, azure.sh, nice. And now we can, we can start to deploy uh, everything. Now, if we try to do that, uh, it will recognize that there is no an environment file and it will create uh, an empty one for us. So now I can do nano and then my environment uh, and I can basically say where I want uh, my solution to be deployed. So it will be DM Prisma, my resource group. Let's call the name DM Prisma again. And uh, I want it to be uh, deployed in central US. And uh, the source will be uh, not this one because this is the reference repository. Oops. I probably want to close to fork it for a reason I will uh, quickly uh, show in a second. So let's say that I'm going to uh, to, to use this repository here, this fork. And uh, I, you need a Git token. The Git token is just used because uh, when you will deploy, there will be something that we need to inject in your folder, in your repository, in order to enable automatic deployment from GitHub to Azure Static Web App. Um, so I'm just grabbing a, a temporary Git token I created. And that's it. So I can save my file. Yes, then my environment file done. There is another thing that is missing here. The environment file needed by Prisma, which contains the database connection string, right? I'm pretty sure that you know that very well. So let's do that. Uh, let's go to the API. There is a, a environment template. So I can just do cp.env template and, and copy to the environment. Now let's do Let's provide the correct, uh, um, the correct uh, uh, query string. So my database here, and let me grab, here we go, this one. And actually let's do this. So I just copy and paste in this part to make it easier and quicker. Now I can exit, uh, I want to save, yes. 
Okay, I'm good. I can now deploy everything. Now, let's start deploying. And while this is deploying, let's see what it's doing. So what, he, what this uh, deployment uh, script is doing, actually, let's see uh, from here, which is easier, is basically uh, just uh, uh, deploying a resource um, um, uh, ARM template uh, that is actually creating your static website. So this will be pretty fast uh, because uh, it, does, it doesn't do a lot, honestly, because the magic happens is GitHub. But so let's go to the portal and see what is happening here in my Prisma resource group. So this is the one test I already prepared, again, just in case something goes wrong, but I would expect here to have Prisma, which is the, the application we just deployed. If I click here and probably the deployment has already finished exactly so it has created an application but now this application is empty because uh, we need the github to start uh, to uh, push the application to um to the azure portal so let's remember that application name is thankful field so we can go and this is just a random name that uh, gets automatically created for you so if we go to um environments you will see that this is waiting for deployment. And right now, unfortunately, the deployment will not work because Prisma uses some uh, special technique to generate at the time the client that is not fully compatible with uh, uh, Azure function, Azure uh, static web apps. But luckily, it's very easy to fix. So you can go to the your your forked repository. I already forked the repository here to make it easier. And here you will have a workflow that is named like the application. So the thankful field. This is uh, the other example I did before. And actually we can uh, we can even uh, delete this. So let me delete uh, the old one. Uh, yes. And let's just uh, change this one. So this is what is created automatically, which basically say take whatever is in uh, uh, this repository and deploy it uh, here in this application. Now, unfortunately, this is not working because uh, at some point, uh, Prisma will try to generate uh, uh, the client, uh, but due to how the folder is, uh, uh, the, the file system is managed uh, by the deployment engine, uh, it will fail. So to fix that is super easy. Um, well, it's super easy once you know how to eat. I spent like a, a day, I think, just to figure out how to make it work. Uh, but uh, likely the solution is very easy. You just have to tell specifically that uh, Prisma needs to be uh, regenerated several times because uh, all these things happen in different folder. And so Prisma otherwise cannot find a client. Um, so that's pretty easy because then we can go here uh, just uh, copy and paste uh, the code uh, I, uh, oh, I have to do edit, just copy and paste the code here. And that's it. So we are making sure that we are using node version 12, which is the one required by Azure function and Azure static web app. And then some uh, comma to make sure that uh, the client is always uh, available to the local folder. Start commit, commit changes and uh, now we can go to action, uh, stop whatever action was running before because we knew we know it's not going to work. And that's it. In two minutes, uh, we will have a fully working uh, website if I haven't done anything wrong. Otherwise, we will fix it. But this is beautiful seeing this working. So this is downloading the repository on the local uh, um, deployment node. Uh, it will uh, install the, all the uh, node dependencies. It will generate the Prisma client and it will do some magic to compress as much as possible the, uh, the outcome of the building of everything, uh, ship it to Azure Function and Azure Static Web Apps and your application will be running. So in literally two minutes uh, and 13 seconds usually, we will have a working website. And in the meantime here, uh, you can you can see that this is um, now, oh, it's already ready. Uh, that's probably not true. This was for before. We still have to wait for our deployment to work. Yeah, so this is, uh, as you can see now, everything is nicely working and you see this is you know why uh, we need to install Prisma client several times because there are several other folders that uh, you know are are kind of shuffle around to make sure that the the, the build outcome is the uh, smallest one. Um, so now we are compiling everything after having correctly generated everything, and that uh, should be almost done here. Um, yeah, post install generating the the Prisma uh, client perfect. Uh, 
and done. Nice. Now uh, it's compressing everything, sending it to Azure function in, again, 15, 30 seconds, we should be good to go. And the beauty is that everything happens from GitHub. So every time you do, you make a change, you want to evolve uh, your solution, you just uh, commit your change uh, and that will and everything will be deployed. Uh, so probably you, in the long term, you want also to change the script here uh, in order to apply the migration that Prisma can generate to the database. So in one shot, you have the, the, the database deployed, the um, the website deployed, the backend deployed, uh, you know, everything works magically. Uh, so usually is around two minutes and something second. Uh, so we should almost be done. Yes, that's usually 30 seconds is how much it takes to move uh, the zip file to the portal, uh, to the Azure uh, static web app engine, and then we should be almost good to go. Um, yep, here we go. The site is up and ready, so I can go here to Prisma, click on Browse, and here we go, the website. I can now, uh, probably since uh, for this example, I'm using always the same database to make it easier for you to follow, um, I would expect to see at least the first to do, because it's the only thing that the anonymous uh, user can see. So let's see. Yes, here we go. So this is a website that you can actually connect to, work on it, uh, and, and create any, you know, public facing to do that you want. If you want uh, to create a private to do, you have to log in. Now you will see that uh, the experience will be different because it is a real experience. This is really connecting to GitHub and asking for permission to uh, send your uh, uh, user email address and username uh, to my application. And now if I go to rest, you will see I am logged in. Uh, Yorick is my GitHub user and I can say hi from here. And you will see that in my database right now, hi from here belongs to another owner ID, which is the ID that my uh, fictitious user ID for the GitHub user I just created. Uh, honestly, this is amazing because uh, in just five minutes, you can be up and running uh, with a full stack, fully working with, with authentication. And uh, uh, it's just wow, when I, the first time I, I was able to put everything together because uh, Otherwise, usually building all this stuff usually take way, way more than just the five minutes uh, you show, I shown. And uh, even building it, uh, aside from the, 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 the issue I had to make Prisma work with uh, Azure Static Web App, uh, uh, let's say overall it took a day. Uh, thanks to the fact that uh, Prisma and TypeScript make, uh, make life super easy, uh, for example, to uh, connect to Azure SQL. Now, having said that, now that you have an idea, of the repository, what it does, uh, how it can help you to learn uh, TypeScript, full stack web app, Azure SQL. Uh, as I said, I just want to take the last uh, five or 10 minutes. I'm looking at the comments um, or, uh, uh, or the times, if I'm uh, uh, on time, to just uh, share a second why uh, I decided to use Azure SQL. Again, beside the fact that, of course, I'm in the product group, but uh, I'm in the product group because I, I think Azure SQL is really uh, one of the best, if not the best database uh, for developers. Uh, I wrote an article uh, on that, so 10 reasons to use Azure SQL in your next project. Uh, but uh, I just want to mention a few things that you may not know about Azure SQL because uh, uh, probably when you started using it, uh, if you started a long time ago like me, things evolved uh, really a lot. Like for example, uh, Azure SQL right now have uh, uh, let me go right here and then I can give it uh, also uh, give you some some of the slides if needed. Uh, for example, we have a multi-model capabilities. We support uh, graph models in Azure SQL and it's actually a pretty good uh, uh, engine that handles uh, uh, graph models here. So you can create an edge and not table. Uh, we, of course, support JSON, so you can easily send back and forth a JSON to Azure SQL. You can store JSON in a table. You can see a table like a JSON or JSON like a table, depending uh, uh, how do you prefer to work. You can use a, a column store uh, to speed up uh, aggregation. And what I really like about Azure SQL is all the things I mentioned work very and amazingly well together. This is a, 
where we spend most of our time from an engineering perspective to make sure that every feature we create is well integrated with all the others. So for example, you can create a, a graph model that contains JSON data on top of which you create a, a column store index. And this, for example, is something that allows you to be flexible, quick, and, uh, and uh, you know, with probably a, a nice model uh, if you need to work, for example, on uh, finding what is uh, the most liked or uh, the so a song that you have to suggest uh, when someone is playing uh, using your streaming application. And just to give you an idea how performant uh, Azure SQL can be on a small 2v core, using 50 million likes and 1 million of unique user and 1 million unique songs uh, schema, modeled as a graph, if you ask what is, you know, the most common song or the most popular song based on the, uh, the friends you have, it will take 30 seconds, which is uh, basically a huge amount of time. If you create a regular index, the one that is typically used to do what we call the point lookup, so uh, looking for a specific row, it will go faster, but still it's 22 seconds. If instead you use a column store index exactly on the same data where you can even have the row index, the whole query to analyze which is the song that you should recommend to your user based on the liking of the friends will go down to three seconds only on 2v core, right? So this is what I really like about Azure SQL. You have flexibility, you have uh, uh, performance, you have security, um, you have the ability to, to be um, you know, on your term in the sense that you can use the model you want. Uh, and of course, performance are more than great, uh, even with all these things work uh, used together. Here is an example of a API like the one I just uh, shared with you on the repository that on a 4v core was easily able to sustain 20,000 requests per second using JSON, using uh, uh, you know, a flexible model like a graph, so whatever you want. So, and uh, here I was using Locust uh, to uh, create some load. Um, so that's, that's something I really want to make sure that you know. Um, then we, the last thing we want to highlight here, oh, this one. Um, other important thing is that, for example, we also have uh, support for spatial, uh, for geospatial data. We even have support for what we call in-memory table, which are table that doesn't take any lock at all. Use a very high concurrency model to keep what, what is called multi-version concurrency control, to keep uh, transaction isolated, but without blocking each other. This is super cool uh, technology. So again, all these things work very well together. And on top of that, uh, you add all the security feature we have. Like for example, we just added the ledger table. Um, so you can have a proven audit trail of what happened to a table or to data. You can encrypt data at rest in flight. Uh, so it's, it's really amazing because uh, uh, our goal is to give developers you uh, as much as feature you, uh, as you need so you don't have to, uh, you know, put this feature in your application and make it uh, overcomplicated. And I think this is a very good uh, example of uh, how SQL can help you to be, uh, in Prisma in this case, and TypeScript, uh, to be super productive. Uh, last thing I want to add, and then I am done. Um, and I hope I have entertained uh, you and uh, waken your interest in Azure SQL is that if you want to learn more, uh, as, as, as Daniel was said, I, I've been a developer for a long time uh, and I realized that there was no specific book that uh, discussed Azure SQL from developer perspective, from a very practical perspective, like why I have to create an index. I don't care about the theory and the B3 and whatever. I just want to understand when I have to create an index, which kind of index and how it can help me. And then, yeah, theory, I can learn it later if I really want. So we wrote this book, Practical Azure SQL Database for Modern Developers, to focus exactly on that. Give to new developers or developers that are new to Azure SQL all the details needed to be productive from a practical perspective, plus each, uh, each um, chapter, the last, uh, the last section, give you detail to all the theory books and articles you may want to read if you want to get deeper into uh, the topic. Otherwise, you will learn enough to be more, more than a happy developer uh, just, you know, by you learning the practical aspect of it. And again, theory is something you may or may not want to, to learn. And with that, I am done in roughly 30 minutes. So 
I hope I have been able to show you something interesting. And let me uh, put here, yep, not this one, but uh, uh, yeah, here we go. The the GitHub uh, the GitHub uh, the GitHub, GitHub connection uh, URL. Um, that's it. That's all on my side, uh, Daniel. <laughs> Davide, thank you so much. That was really insightful, and it was I think it was really fun just to sort of even collaborate on this uh, on this uh, sample repository. Um, I actually had a question and yep. one note. So essentially, in this repository, could you talk a little bit more about what these uh, uh, this uh, ARM file is? Oh, is this a yes. way to sort of define declaratively infrastructure and then have... Correct. So basically, an ARM template, uh, Azure Resource Management template, is uh, just a way to say what you want to uh, be. So let's say, for example, here you are saying... Uh, I so let's let's set aside uh, the parameters uh, for a second. But basically, you are saying uh, I want to create a static website, uh, and basically, if you go to the to the portal, uh, uh, usually you are asked uh, a lot of questions like uh, what is the size, what is the uh, tier, um, if you want to create uh, some application settings. So let me show it to you. So if you go to the portal, uh, this one here. Yeah, for example, if you go to configuration, you will see that here automatically, uh, you know, an application settings appeared. Well, that's not magic. Normally, you would do manually, visually by doing, uh, you know, add uh, and then typing. But of course, you want to automate these things and you cannot do it uh, using a UI. So what you do is actually create uh, one way of doing it is creating a NAR template that basically describes uh, all the answer to all the questions you would have asked otherwise. Um, to simplify a lot. So as you can okay. see here, I'm creating an app settings uh, called database URL, and I'm taking the value from a parameter so the template can be reusable. Uh, for example, right. you want to have a different connection string than me, right? So you will still be able to use exactly the same parameter, uh, the same template, but using uh, a different parameter, it will work for your configuration. I see, and gotcha, the, very yeah. clear. Yeah, that's, that's how you call it. So very nice. There are other ways to call it, but this is what, the one I like. And uh, yeah. another question is when it comes to what is known as static sites in Azure, mm -hmm. static sites in Azure also include uh, the functions functionality, right? So Correct. Static sites includes the static site hosting and in addition to that, the ability to deploy functions and to have yes. all of that sort of glob together. Do you want to speak maybe a little bit more about how authentication works in general? Because uh, I saw that you were essentially using the authentication um, uh, that is provided by Azure. So yes and no, in the sense that Azure is actually calling. So this is OAuth uh, to authentication. So what uh, a static website helped me to do is to manage what we call the authentication dance that, you know, if you do OAuth 2, it's not exactly the simplest thing in the world, right? Yeah. Uh, um, so what I like about static web app is that uh, it boils down to, you know, making sure that you call, uh, uh, actually, let me show you. Um, and it's well documented. So in the read, in the readme, you will you will also find uh, uh, the link to the documentation that explains clearly how to do. But it's amazingly uh, well documented and super nice. So here we go. How do I know if I am uh, for what concern uh, Azure function uh, st within static web apps authenticated? I just have to call dot out me. If this returns something, I know I'm logged in. Otherwise. I, I can log in. How do I log in? Super simple. I go, I just go to, for example, dot out slash login slash GitHub or Twitter, for example. Now, this um, website that is basically provided, uh, this page that is provided by uh, Static Web Apps for me, takes care of everything calling the GitHub endpoint, uh, providing the correct response URL to the server so you have a callback. Uh, so everything is automatically done. What you get at the end, if uh, the authentication is successful, is uh, a token that the front end will automatically and securely pass to the Azure function. Because you have, you know, the front end is what is actually being, uh, you know, is what actually starts the authentication process. But then you have to have a token that is passed to the function, to the back end, so that the function knows who you are. 
right? Right. The basically, what would we normally be the our, the the better token? But right. this is again, even this is is uh, simplified for us because the only thing I have to do here. Let me show you. Let's go to the rest function uh, TDS. Uh, the here we go. I just have uh, to search if there is a XMS client principle that contains a packet for me already, all the information that GitHub, GitHub or the external authentication returned. And, uh, and then this code uh, basically return uh, uh, JSON that contains properties depending on the authentication provider, right? And, but all, all authentication provider will at least return a user ID. You can have an email. So it's super simplified in the sense that uh, I guess the goal of the Azure Static Web App is to remove all the complexity in the sense that uh, it's going to shield it, especially if you don't need to, you know, manage all it in detail because you just have to do a to-do website, which is not like, you know, uh, doesn't need to be uh, complex. Uh, actually, if you can do it very quickly and fast, you are happy because you can focus on more important things, right? Right. So that's, that's what I like. And so Azure Static Web Apps is a way to easy encapsulate front end, back end and security and try to make it as simple as possible for developers. I see. And there's one thing that is Prisma specific that I think uh, might be a simpler way in the mm -hmm. GitHub workflow file and the GitHub Actions workflow. You, I saw that you added an extra step in order to install Prisma, which fixed your problem. Yes. Now, yes. this problem is quite a common one. This is because oh. essentially Prisma client is like a skeleton yeah. um, library. And, and I wrote a sort of a comment here, um, but oh, cool. it should be enough to just run NPX Prisma generate uh, mm -hmm. as the post build command or pre build. I'm not sure exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, how this works, but if you run the uh, npx prisma generate, it should eliminate the need to install prisma. Um, so I think I tried that. The, the trick here is that uh, Oryx, uh, which is the engine that uh, kicks in here in GitHub to basically build everything and then move uh, all the built uh, artifacts to Azure Function, do some tricks with uh, with uh, directories. So if I, I tried, if I, and maybe I, 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 I can try it again, but uh, if I just do generate, it will generate the client in a folder that when uh, the last part, uh, the post process kicks in. So it is part here. Yeah. So these things here will not find, if I just do, um, if I just do MPX generate, it will not move um the correct modules to this folder right. i don't know if it's because it's generated on the fly and that that could be but i noticed that if i just do that uh, then here uh, it was complaining that there is there was no prisma client right, right um right. but yeah maybe I'm, I'm not an expert on oryx definitely and even less on node um, so if someone wants to play and simplify this, I'm super happy uh, to, you know, uh, accept, uh, you know, PR and improve the repository. Absolutely. I actually have a challenge for people who are uh, on the on the show um, and, and are, are attending. So if uh, you want to download this repository, now the repository is already working, right? So it's OK. You download it, you install, everything is done. It's too magic. Now let's let's try to make something uh, a little bit more challenging. So what you can do is, uh, um, so when you run the repository on your machine, you can also download something called uh, the to-do backend uh, JavaScript specification, which is basically um, a test that will tell you if you have implemented the backend for the to-do to MVC correctly, right? Because the to-do MVC front end is sending you some JavaScript, it's some JSON, right? But how do you know how that JSON should be done? And how do you know which uh, method you should implement? Post, uh, get, patch, and how do they, uh, should they respond? So these uh, specs uh, is a set of tests that allows you to, um, uh, to make sure that what you have done works correctly. But there is a twist. Uh, so for example, if you run localhost, and this is where the function resides, you will see that this 
all works nice, so meaning that uh, the repository already implement get and post and delete as the specification uh, asks you to do, but then at some point you start to get uh, an error. Because, uh, and I like the idea, just like in the real world, uh, now after a while we introduce a new requirement. Now I want also to be able to order the to-do. So we need to have a new field called to-do to uh, order. And uh, it will be a good exercise, especially for those who are new, to try to change the Prisma model to add support to order, change the code to add a support to ability to move the items and specify an order, uh, starting from this repository. So they can start from something that they know it's working, uh, you know, uh, walk their way through making it uh, to evolve it, just like it happened in real life, and see how the entire process is. So I really like uh, these, these uh, you know, um, repository and, and to do uh, MVC story because it really shows, uh, even if uh, in a simple way, <laughs> the real world problem. Like you do something and the next day someone comes, okay, hey, requires some change. Fix, fix what you have done, right? So that's another nice things to do. Davide, it's been really great having you. Is there anything else you would like to share before we wrap up for today? Uh, I think I'm good. I hope uh, that is, uh, yeah, uh, was interesting. Uh, people like it. Uh, and yeah, if you have any question, uh, even after uh, that, uh, I, you know, just ping me on Twitter or email and I will try to answer as soon as possible. Great. So with that, once again, thank you. Uh, sure. Really looking forward to doing some more stuff on Azure SQL and yep. uh, just the Azure ecosystem in general. And hope to see us here, see you here soon again. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much All for having me. All the best.